Hey, cheers. Episode cheers. three, baby. Yeah. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Oh, damn, dude. I thought we were just going to sip it. Is, is that kind of podcast? All right, fuck it. That's what I said. Shot of whiskey and a water back. Take a sip of water, and you'll, yeah, yeah. you'll realize you're like, whoa, hey. Oh, that's good. Dude, I don't know what it is. It's actually in one of the first pubs that I'd ever gone to, Fado's, over in Austin. Okay. A girl named Claire that I used to go to school with, she worked over there, and she's the one who introduced me to a shot of powers and a water back she just ordered them one day she was like just just try it you'll love it you'll love it okay cool we did and it was like whoa okay so that's the first place where you tried powers yeah that's the first place where i ever tried powers and i was like i've never really gone back i mean jameson's great red breast is awesome but dude the the jameson's that you had that the one that you got from the distillery what was that one called jameson crested oh my god that was the best do you have any more i still have maybe about two three ounces left and i had actually was thinking about it i was i had it in my hands this this afternoon thinking should i bring it should i not no you shouldn't have i I don't i I don't know it's it's too special for this occasion you know i (laughs) (laughs) well if anything i was thinking it is a special occasion so it's something that i should probably bring right special enough but yeah that's the one that was at the distillery only back then when jameson used to be mature to like exclusively like sherry casks so you know, it had some much like just deeper nuances than what your normal regular like Jameson or whenever you go to a bar and you order like say five shots of JMO. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I've been super impressed with just how much knowledge you have of all of this stuff. The where it's distilled, how it's distilled, the history behind all these drinks. I am super impressed with how much that that you that you know about all of this stuff dude there's a sometimes i feel like how do i monetize on this or how do i capitalize on this mostly because like i had like why i don't have a very good memory on lots of things but for this dude you could have fooled me man yeah it's like but for this i do for some reason like when it comes to just booze alcohol wine beer like hard spirits things like that for some reason like I can retain that knowledge, whether it be like some particular like distillery is like mash bill. I'm just like, oh, yes, I remember that. Yeah, it's about 67 this and 12 percent that, you know, but ask me, ask me what I did like two days ago. And I'm like, I don't remember. Uh -uh. I don't. don't (laughs) So, okay, so (laughs) you're okay. You're obviously David Hernandez. Junior, yeah, or the I'm, second. How, what, what do you? I, I'm I'm a second. Yeah. So I'm, well, it's uh really I'm just known as David. So nobody ever really calls me like David Junior. Junior. And sometimes you might I might hear that over the phone just in case like both uh, David Senior and I are over inside the store. Oh, well, I, I guess here I can call him my dad, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like at work I never call him my dad or anything like that. For sure, it's a family business, right? You know. How long has a family business been around? For people that don't know, thirty seven. Holiday wine and liquor, by the way. Thirty eight years. Thirty eight years. Thirty eight years. Holiday. Aren't you thirty eight? Are thirty seven? I just turned thirty five last week. Thirty five. Yeah. So you you grew up all your life with the 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 holiday like being around liquor. So is it? something that you just you you were just kind of like born into it or you just happen to have a fascination with I think the history and how drinks are made i mean you know i think it's a little bit of both uh, for sure i grew up in and around bottles <laughs> bottles in cans well prior to it used to be called it was called papa top before it changed yeah, to papa holiday top. wine and liquor yeah, yeah. coldest beers in town for sure the store that i was always at was with my dad over on wasago on railroad road railroad way i don't know uh, i don't know either it's probably railroad ray but i railroad road sounds a little bit yeah better and, and dumber, <laughs> right? but yeah so it was uh it was an old store there and of course we just sold cold beer snacks things like that but i do remember being there four or five years old my dad teach me plus minus additions like using using the register giving people out change things like that so we just i just grew up around it and then of course like we decided to grow up a little bit, move on from beer and started doing liquor. And then we grew up a little bit more and started doing some wine and then started doing cigars. And really, I think what really got me into this or likewise, like in addition to just growing up around it, like everybody that my father brought around were just people who knew their shit. <laughs> like they really talked about it. And I always thought like, and they talked about it with such passion and i can tell you at the time i really didn't have that i was just fascinated by their um 
their zeal, like the how their eyes would light up when they would talk about it. But of course, I never knew what they were talking about at the time, never really got a chance to try it. Um, but it wasn't until I started bartending, then I started getting more like I was always already interested in all these products, but I really started working hands on with it, you know, and you were a bartender in Austin. Yeah. Uh, how? OK, where, which bar? Which bar? many right so uh first bar that i ever started bartending that was a sports bar called uh, champions okay and then after that moved on to another bar on 6th street 36th street pretty much like every bartender i guess like budding young budding bartenders like mecca at the time right yeah, yeah. so i was bartending at this place called aces it was a burlesque like cabaret lounge yeah 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 and so and i worked the stage bar probably the best bar but also too i was one of the smallest guys there and it was the tiniest space to work in so that's <laughs> <laughs> so like that's where i was at the place still exists well the building still exists it's now called recess bar and the other places where i bartended at was over at molotov lounge j blacks on like west 6th street and then you know moonlighted a couple of places like that which don't exist anymore, you know? So I always got around, I always got around just to like bartending and like working with these products. But then finally, um, how do I say, started getting into like fine dining stuff, things like that. Everything that I was doing just seemed like really interconnected. And mm -hmm. then re didn't really realize until I actually came back home that, holy crap, there's still like so much knowledge that I have retained over the years that I just, it was just there. It was always something tri trivial. You know, I didn't think that um, this knowledge had any real import other than just me. I just like to talk about booze. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> well, I well, like here's to what I'm getting at. Okay. So if your dad, if your dad was a shoemaker, would you be this into like making shit like probably how not? No, is no. it just a coincidence? I think it probably or... is just a coincidence that it did work out. Like, did work out this way like i absolutely just enjoy learning about it i enjoy smelling it i enjoy drinking it in fact actually i was uh telling gabby uh the other day that i, I mean i was hung over just full stop hung over like it, <laughs> just bleh, dude no 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 i can't i cannot have a drink tonight or today or anything i'm gonna abstain for like two days right or something like that same day you know f definitely in the throes of like of my hangover, but I'm doing dishes. I toss out a glass and it's a glass of scotch that I had the night before. Just, there was only just a little bit left, but All it right. was compass box, flaming heart. And seriously, my, I was gushing still. I'm hungover. The smell of alcohol is not necessarily appealing to me, but then I smell, I'm like, oh, I smell <laughs> that lovely peatiness. Oh, the fruitiness, like everything was just like being hit. But at the same time, I'm just like, I smell all these lovely aspects of it. But then my stomach's just like, that's going to be a no for me, dog. Yeah, yeah. Like, the, no, the, no, the, no. <laughs> I like, I just enjoy, I enjoy it. I, I like it. I mean, of course, like I'm not a, uh, you know, I'm not just like crazy where I'm like, yeah, I'm soon to like drink every single day. I really just enjoy yeah. what we're doing at the time, yeah, especially yeah. like right now, you know, Dude, I, I another drink. Okay. So what, what's, what's this one right here? Yeah. So this one's just the Carbach Pilsner, you know, I always like to have like an easy drinking beer before we really start to get into like the heavier stuff. I mean, we'll still touch up on powers later. Right. I just oh, like to do, yeah. I, I just like to do a shot of powers and a water back because it's, uh, you know, it's like my go-to like, Whoa. I'm gonna start drinking this one before it gets warm. Oh yeah. my god, this is this is really good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's dude. What's where's the can? Where? So, so let me pull out a better can because I crushed it already. Oh shit. Yeah, but this guy right over here. Oh shit, dude, this is good. No, it's a it's a solid beer, and lately, like these days, right when it comes to like making beer, it, it seems to be a race to what is the most ridiculous beer that we can come out with. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean. And sometimes uh, I say this with a grain of salt because those ridiculous beers can be fucking awesome. <laughs> like, dude, they can be this great. beer is super smooth. But when it comes to just like a Pilsner, dude, this is getting back to basics, right? Yeah. And uh, when you get back to like basics to a beer like this, there's no, it's there's nothing special about it. It's no frills. It it doesn't have any like adjunct flavors like strawberry dude, puree like, or anything like this else on a like hot that. day barbecuing in the backyard. Dude, okay. Well, I know that one of my cousins, uh, Jaime. I know that you're. I know that you're watching this, cousin Jaime, who lives uh, upstate or midstate now, I guess. K a r b a c h Carbach. Dude, you gotta try this one, dude. Fucking awesome. 
it's a solid beer and dude. So I, dude, every now and then i just like to go back to basics you know start off with like an easy drinking beer i mean of course i got some other stuff over here that will be like Woo. we got a lot of toys today dude. yeah we do we, we do have a lot of selection <laughs> i mean we got some beer we got some whiskey definitely like oh, my yeah, favorite dude. one two combos yeah put this back in the ice bro Ooh, yeah that's a good one i gotta pick up one of those dude i gotta pick up a six pack of one of those oh man all right so you know like uh okay so this is my podcast this is episode three mm -hmm. i've been having a blast doing this shit and i've learned a lot i was about to ask you i'm like we can swear right is that like because i know i don't have any sponsors so yeah we could <laughs> fuck's wrong with y'all it's a great sponsor <laughs> just, just, just a little bit of money would go a long way here <laughs> okay you, i i can't imagine like uh having a, a podcast like joe rogan is like you just do this for a living you just yeah. oh yeah just invite your friends just have a podcast or whatever and you don't have to break a lot of the the podcasts right now like they have like I, well, I want to say the name in case it become a sponsor <laughs> but they'll have to like break and they're like oh hey and this podcast is sponsored by whatever but the idea of getting money up with doing this oh my god it would be like the fucking dream job oh yeah dude it's uh, like what, it's like what do we do we just uh, yeah, chat we just, and shoot just the shit chat and bullshit and drink oh my god so okay so like the first podcast i it was a halloween episode right i had like the batman uh outfit on and people want me to put that fucking thing back on it's like, badass why, though why don't you do all of the podcasts well, with but, the, the thing on but also too you actually have a legit batman costume and not just one and yeah, but yeah. you have two yeah, I, got, I think I, I got i got two i was gonna say it's like maybe <laughs> three but no i was like i'm pretty safe with two but uh, you have two extremely legitimate batman costumes and they want me to put that shit back on dude when <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll weigh myself before i put it on oh and dude then... you gotta be your best i know like i have a pair of pants that are like that they're my favorite pair of pants but i better be fucking like no dude fit here here's the thing so i'll, I'll weigh myself before i put that thing on and i'll weigh myself after just to see how much water I'll lose <laughs> in sweat. I'll mm -hmm. lose two to five pounds of water weight. Huh? Putting that thing on. Damn. The, the, the suit that I have on, the, the suit that I had on for the Halloween episode. So imagine having like a, like a swimsuit on, like for, for surfing or something. Right? Yeah, you got it. Okay. So there's that piece of fabric and there's foam muscles glued onto that. And then on top of that fabric is the fabric that like you see, right? Mm -hmm. So it's three layers of thick fabric along with the cape that's in the back, right? Uh -huh. when, when I did that episode- And the cowl. Dude, and, and the cowl, and the cowl like, it's it's all rubber. So the heat doesn't escape. It yeah, just, you're just sweating probably. Yeah, it's gross. I like When, when I checked out the seat afterwards, <laughs> <laughs> I, I sweat it. Imagine how much sweat you have to have to sweat through your underwear the swimsuit layer, the foam, mm -hmm. and the exterior layer to get, and the cape. And the cape. To get into the seat, bro. You're giving me some uh, serious flashbacks of PTSD <laughs> and my uh, my follies in high school of trying to drop 35 pounds in two Fuck, weeks dude. for wrestling. Yeah. Oy, oy, dude, I will, like wearing that suit, holy shit. And people want me to get back in there. I've had multiple people say, dude, do another one in the suit. Do some by <laughs> yourself. And I, I was supposed to do some by myself. It like just. Like maybe you as suit, Batman and then not. you on yourself on this side. Just like. <laughs> Could be. I don't want to put that much time into post. Yeah. <laughs> so the the second episode I was with uh, my friend Gabby, who is mm -hmm. like a fitness instructor and whatever. So uh, I wanted to have her on the show. And we're old friends. We go back since college or whatever. You know what I noticed? Mm. So when I did the Batman episode, I had the suit on with the cowl on. I thought, okay, it looks good. I, I'm actually, I'm happy with the way that this looks. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, hey, you know what? It looks like a legit podcast. Holy shit. You know, yeah. not bad. Second episode, I'm I'm here with Gabby and whatever, and we're talking about fucking fitness, bro. Uh -huh. we're talking about fitness, and I see myself fitness pizza, dude. In my I, I belly. see myself outside of the fucking Batman suit, and I thought, holy shit, I look fucking fat. And here I am talking about let's get into shape and let's talk about exercise and lip burning fat, and I'm 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 making fun of fatties uh -huh. on my podcast, <laughs> and I, I when I was editing it, I was like, Jesus. I'm fucking fat, bro. Yeah. I'm fucking fat. It's hard. It's hard Dude. when you when you uh, hold that proverbial mirror up to yourself and you're just like, man, I gotta, I, I gotta get right. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Like as, so you know, I, I do video production, photography for a living, right? Mm -hmm. I see the reaction of people, like when I take their headshots, 
and I show him, okay, look, li- this is a legit camera with a legit lens, good lighting. This is what you look like in real life. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people that don't like it because they're used to taking the selfies from super high up and the the app that, that your phone has automatically. Oh, yeah. Fucking... I mean, it slims your face down and then elongate or like adds longer right. eyelashes, things like that. In fact, actually, it happened a couple of weeks ago where I went and ran into a friend and she was just like, hey, I uh, haven't seen you in a while. So we caught up and then she was just like, hey, let's take a photo. OK, cool. So then she pulls out her camera and then she's like, oh hold on and then she like slides and then like hits like a two like filter buttons and i'm just like i look beautiful that's not how i'm supposed to look yeah <laughs> like Dude. wait like my face like my eyes are wider i kind of have like bambi eyes i'm just like wait why do i have eyelashes too <laughs> 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 so you can add this later or something you know and in my mind i was just like yo you're already extremely like you are a very attractive woman without that already mm-hmm. you know but you know well, here's the thing. So when I take pictures of people that they, they don't like how they, they look in real life, they're like, mm-hmm. oh, no, no, retake it, retake it. This, yeah, this, I know, no, no, look. this is how you look. Well, here's the thing. Like people run from that shit. Like, no, no, delete that photo, get rid of it. No, we're going to do it again. Here's what I do. Uh-huh. I go the exact opposite. Like I have fucking pictures on my cell phone of, of pictures of me, bro, mm-hmm. that fuck. I'll, I'll, I'll fucking show you right now. Dude. <laughs> I have one. Uh, I took, I was doing a, a PSA video uh, for a production company. They were doing a PSA of uh, a COVID, right? Like mm-hmm. we did this interview and we did all this stuff. And so for a minute of the, of the commercial shoot that we were doing, I had to be a stand in to make sure that the lighting is right and everything's right. So uh, I was able to see like a rough shot of what the, uh, what the shot's going to look like once they get the actual person in the chair that we're going to interview. Yeah. So I saw what I looked like. I did not like it. Like, holy shit, that's fucking me. Mm-hmm. That's awful. Send me a photo of that. I need that fucking. And so look, 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 bro. Look, look at that shit. Look at that shit right there. Oh, it's on my fucking phone. You, you fucking look at it. Look at that shit. That's what. That's yeah, fucking like, uh, you. That's uh, you, bro. Like a little, just a little oh, roundness. I, yeah, you know, r- just a little like, fucking, the, the, fucking those chunky. Are like, I was like, dude. I want to pinch those cheeks. <laughs> uh, it's, it's great when you're a child. I know. And then as an adult, you're just like, but dude, you had like, but that's just a testament to how good like your cheekbone structure is. That, that's what fat like... people say. <laughs> <laughs> dude, like when I, but that's the thing. Like I have, I have other photos that like I, I have and I look fucking horrendous. And I, when I do the, the solo thing, I wanted to have that fucking back there or something you know mm-hmm. and uh yeah you gotta you gotta not i don't want to say embrace it embrace it is not the right word because that's more like accepting like yeah i accept that's what i look like no is that's that not what I, you want that's that not I, what you want what you want is okay that's what you fucking look like you fucking hate it you fucking hate it every fucking day when you look in the fucking mirror that's fucking that's your face you're walking around with that shit hey, you don't fuck cover yourself, up okay your face. no no yeah. <laughs> And so, well, dude, I've been trying. I, I've lost like seven pounds mm-hmm. since that last podcast, like in a month. I, I'm I'm doing really bad with the podcast. Like, I want to have one like every week. I'm doing one like once a fucking month. It takes but, a while to set up, you know. Eh. It's more like well, in the beginning, I was thinking like, well, I want to have someone to interview all the time. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I didn't want to do one by myself. I think it'd feel it'd feel weird. Uh, yeah. But I think in in the end, you would have to do it. You know, Indeed. like, cause I mean, what if, what if you couldn't show up because of whatever reason? And it's like, okay, well you gotta, you gotta put out fucking something. Right. And so the, uh, the thing about it is like, Hey, we are used to, look, I talk to myself quite often. You know, if somebody ever told me I don't talk to myself, I'd say you're a fucking liar. And I just trust you just a little bit less. Not because you <laughs> lied that you didn't, that you don't talk to yourself, but in the actual event that it is true that you do not have an internal dialogue with yourself. Or an external yeah, yeah. dialogue with yourself. I, I, that's something that just doesn't compute to me. I'm just like, wait, you don't talk to yourself. You don't. I don't know. I don't know how 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 you do that. I, there's something wrong with you, and I like you, but I don't trust you. Yeah. <laughs> like, you might secretly be I, a serial killer. Yeah, I might yeah. yawn, and if they don't yawn after I yawn, I'm like, you are one. Yeah. You sociopath. Yeah. Like you, I've caught you. I caught you. <laughs> and then I'm like, they they weren't even looking at me when I yawned. So <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Bro. Well. 
going back to the booze, mm-hmm. uh, I remember back in, I, I want to say it was like in college or something. I, I remember hearing, I can't remember where I heard it, but if you were to go to a party and you don't know anybody there, the people that you want to hang with are, are usually the smokers or the drinkers. You don't want to hang around people who don't drink. Like, I, I, I guess I could understand if you don't drink it for health reasons or if you're like a recovering alcoholic or whatever. Sure. But they're, bef- they're definitely not going to be the fun people to hang around with. Well, no. <laughs> I mean, exactly. It's just like that, you know, proverbial saying uh goes you know no great story ever started off with i was sitting on the couch at a party minding my own business you know or i was eating the salad no it always starts off with i was with this rando group of like people next to the keg or you know (laughs) hanging out with these guys over here smoking some chiba or you know these folks over here like that's why i'm like no I mean, that would be correct advice. You want to go over there. That's where the party is at. That is where you will get some people that are social yeah. or want to talk to you or else why go to a party? If I, anything, for some sociological studies or something, right? But, yeah, <laughs> no, nobody wants that shit. No, yeah. You know, speaking of which, I think it was when I when I posted uh, one of the promotional images of, of, of this shit, right? I, I posted one image and I think it was one of your friends that wanted us to do like a drunk history. Mm-hmm. I saw that shit on Facebook. Oh yeah, that's right. I so, want to say her name was Nora or something. Do you, do you know who I'm talking about? Uh, I remember the comment. Yeah. I just don't remember. Like, who. You guys should do drunk history. I was like, yes. <laughs> I was like, yes. Can you, you know share what? Actually, drunken stories. You know, I can share drunken stories. I, can I share mean, drunken stories. Yeah, I was like, that's, <laughs> I was like, I do. I think uh, I do like 90 percent of the time. You know. In fact, actually, uh, just going back to your post stuff, I know you were looking for some. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. I'm giggling already. Just thinking about like the like propositioning you in this way. <laughs> uh, shoot, bro. Because <laughs> you were looking for somebody to do a boudoir shoot, right? I found the chick, man. Awesome. <laughs> I was, I was that like, episode's fucking yeah, coming. If you didn't, I was gonna be like, yo, me and like three other dudes will be like, we'll do a doudoir shoot. A doudoir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I was like, how, how? I was like, how do I broach the subject? <laughs> It's like, it's like, dude, if you don't find anybody, we'll, like, I'll do it. And maybe like two or three other people, but it won't be boudoir, but it'll be doudoir. Doudoir. shit. Yeah. And <laughs> it'll be sexy. Yeah, it will be sexy. It will be cool. <laughs> and I'm just like, I, I, there's like two or three of the most like comfortable, buddy, best buddies of mine that I know. And I'd be like, just a couple of dudes yeah, in just, their underwear. Just a couple of it's dudes. It's not gay. It's not gay at all. You know, there's just nothing. hanging out. Being bros, being you know? bros, being bros, and some sexy lingerie, you know. All, dude. Hey, if anything, I feel like this would be a little bit more inclusive. All we get are like briefs and boxers and things like that. Our our underclothes are boring. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, like if I were and I was gonna do uh, the the solo podcast, and I kind of wanted to do an update on that because I had mentioned doing the boudoir thing like on the first fucking episode. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it, and I actually had a hard time finding people that are willing to do it i mean it's just hard to approach the model without because uh, i'm sure and it's one of the things that i want to talk about in the podcast with that model mm-hmm. like how much they get harassed uh, online so i mean I, i'm sure that they get messages uh, can you imagine on their instagram and their facebook uh, oh, i want to take your picture hey let's take pictures and then when someone like me that comes along like look i'm legit i've been doing this for fucking 10 years mm-hmm. i want i want to do this i haven't done the boudoir photography and yeah it would be really interesting not just to do it but you know have the interaction of we'll do the the photo shoot just like how we do the photo shoot for you right yeah do something like that and then like a week later after i have time to edit the photos and whatever that we can talk about the experience of what it was like and then for for her the shit that she has to go through because i'm sure that on the offset it looks it looks like all i do is every weekend or so i'll do a photo shoot in lingerie or whatever and Mm -hmm. i get paid through only fans or whatever yeah it's like okay but you don't take into consideration like all the harassment that it has to come like the average woman that works at a car dealership or something you know Mm -hmm. like how much do they get sexually harassed and then if you put yourself in the model that i'm in my underwear in front of people or nude photos the the amount of shit that you get 
not just from creepy photographers, but you, j online. Could you imagine? Yeah. No, I well, like I can. I do. I mean, if anything, sometimes, of course, like photos pop up, Instagram feed, things you might be interested, things like that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Start scrolling through and like you see some comments and you're just like, man, this whole section is like super toxic. Like this is uh, essentially like these are comments are super out of line <laughs> like super out of line it was like i mean and these are rando strangers on the internet right strangers exactly much less somebody who's like a photographer trying to cut like come over here and uh, i would imagine yeah there are quite a few more like predatory like creepy photographers because did you see it i mean when i lived in austin you would see it quite often just flyers looking for uh models to help with their portfolios it's not yeah. a paid gig, things like that, but you know they get exposure. Yeah, yeah. Things like that. So it was. I I can only imagine like the harassment or like any other like comments going that like going that way. I mean, yeah. how do they handle that? What do you do? Um, I mean, I would imagine most like ninety percent of the time it's just like you ignore it, right? But once you read those words, I'm sorry, like it's one of those things like once you see it, you can't unsee it. You know, you can't unring that bell. And yeah. even though it is like, I, how do I say, even though they would be like in random, like internet strangers and you don't know them, there's it's nothing really like personal. It would be really difficult not to internalize that kind of like, I guess like behavior or the attitude or whatever it is vibe that they're trying to push off. Like even for me, and when I read a comment, I'm just like, yo, no, you know, yeah. that's like, even if I can get the intent as a male on there, even if it's veiled through like some kind of like double entendre or things like that, it's like, dude, you must, somebody must get that all the time. All the time. And so what do you do? That would be a really interesting, you know, I would like to know. It's, it's coming at the, at the end of this month or the beginning of January. I've already talked to this one particular model that mm -hmm. she finally listened to me. It's like, oh, you have a podcast, all you want to do. And I explained to her like, okay, this is who I am. This is what I want to do. And she's all down for it. Yeah. So, that's coming at the end of this month, sometime in January. So, like, that's coming. Right. And that came, you know, just from, like, hey, this is what you do. I mean, once when, it, when somebody's coming or approaching somebody in earnest about it, you know, it may be perceived initially, like, at first, at first glance, like, mm, I don't know. But, yeah, yeah. you know, if you're just like, hey, this is what I do. Here's my portfolio. You know, mo I would say most people generally tend to give up maybe after like the first time or like even maybe on the second touch or something but you know if establishing like a dialogue or that like line there or just like telling people continually telling people in honest like this is what you do i would be hard pressed to like find somebody who'd be like nah fuck that like nah nah yeah, nah yeah, nah yeah. nah but eventually she saw that she noticed like no you're actually a legitimate photographer you are doing it like you are working on something that you've never worked before you're looking for a model to work with Right. Not, to, not take advantage of. And it, it's really more of like the experience of, in her perspective, what, what kind of shit does she go through? Mm -hmm. But that's coming up. Uh, so one of the things, actually, this would be a great segue. Uh, okay. Oh, you still got your beer, bro. I'm oh, sorry, you. sorry, sorry. Okay, so next we're doing old fashioned, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Set that up, bro. Set that up. Indeed. So like, one of the things... One of the things that I wanted to talk to you about, there was there was a drink that you made me, fuck, I want to say it was like two years ago. It was uh, it was a riff on an old fashioned. So you you made me an old fashioned with a uh, ron sacapa, right? Is that how you say it? Yeah, ron sacapa. Good Dude, memory. Soup, super. I, I, that's how much it affected me. Like, oh my god, this old fashioned is fucking amazing. Dude, that's a good memory on that one, man. That so, okay. was actually one of the very. I would say that was the second video that you and I had ever done. Like, was it? Yeah, I mean, it was one of the older ones. Dude, I had yeah, so much fun. Because the first doing one was shit. the Johnny Walker stuff, and that's when we made Johnny Snow and a couple oh, of yeah. other like classic. Like, I still cocktails. make that like on cold days. Jo oh my god, that's a, it's such a good drink. It, it's so dope. here, here's my question for you. I, actually, uh, man, I, I wish I could remember the name. It's uh, there's a, it's like a mental experiment, right? It's a it's a paradox that you you think about in your head, right? There really is no no right or wrong answer. It's the the ship of uh, ah, God. I can't remember the fucking name. So let's just call it. Uh, I don't know. Well, what's a, what's a famous ship? A famous ship. It could be a starship. Let's call it. Uh, yeah. I guess the Falcon, right? Millennium Falcon. Yeah, we can call it the Millennium Falcon. Okay, the Millennium Falcon. Okay, so we'll call this uh, the Falcon Paradox, right? Mm -hmm. 
it's not i mean it's, it's based off of a real paradox but i can't remember the name of the actual ship but anyway okay so let's just say we do a little mental experiment here if if you replace half of the falcon's you know internal external parts and you set those parts aside half of it is gone you replace it with identical parts mm -hmm. is that still the original falcon suppose suppose after time after wearing down or whatever of, of mm -hmm. the falcon you replace practically every single part and you save those parts and you put them aside now you have a falcon with entirely new parts is that still the original Millennium Falcon or let's just say the parts that you set aside mm -hmm. all the used parts you put all those parts together so now you have two Falcons which one is the original are they both original Ooh. one of them is original so here's the thing here's what I'm getting at here uh -huh. when it comes to making an old-fashioned at what point does it become not an old fashioned. That's the the okay. originally that's where you, what you're getting at. Like at what point does the Falcon not become that's not the Falcon anymore? Right. So you know what? When it comes to that, right? It's like uh if you subbed out okay, so we use bourbon. Right. Right? So all right, cool. We use bullet bourbon on this one, because it's my favorite bourbon right. of all time. <laughs> and so we subbed it out for like this one, right? A uh, triple distilled, like softer whiskey, for example. I mean, well, there's still whiskeys, right? All right. But I would say, in terms of a Millennium Falcon, right? This is like changing out. Like, okay, so this would be like your normal, like ion drives, right over here, like your <laughs> normal hyperdrive, and this would be slightly like weaker hyperdrive maybe not with the same kind of like speed that the millennium falcon is actually known for but it's still the millennium falcon right okay so when you change this like just the base spirit up so okay it's, what i did was a riff on an old fashioned i just right. subbed i subbed bourbon for rum right? right and so i would is it still considered you know what? Because it, it, it really gets to you at what point is it a whole new drink entirely? Like, how, how okay. much do you have to change a drink to where it's like, this is a whole new thing? You know what? I think, um, see, so I think that's, uh, I mean, that's a very good question, a right? Philosophical question. Very for philosophical. Your ass. I would say it would be, I would say it is a Millennium Falcon you're in think, spirit. You're, you're, you're thinking too much. I, am. I would say it's a Millennium Falcon in spirit, but not the Millennium Falcon anymore because. Like you've changed your base spirit, you've changed, you've completely changed the nature of the cocktail itself, and oh yeah, shit, this old fashioned isn't done. Where where are those cherries? Oh, we can use the cherries for the Manhattan. Um, uh, unless you like, unless you really, really, really. I like, I like cherry. cherries in an old fashioned. All right. We got the fiber cherries right over here. Dude, okay. Uh, ha hand me those real quick. Hand me those cherries. Uh, I know that my cousin Jaime is a, is a big fan of my, my, my two-episode podcast. These wild cherries that you introduced me to, uh, I mean, they're only found at Rubens here in McAllen. And, and Rubens is tucked away like around a whole bunch of little homes in like mid-McAllen, South McAllen-ish. Yeah, it's like, it's like in the corner of Hackberry and Bicentennial or yeah. something like that. If, if you go there, I, it, it looks like a little shop that's haunted and they sell gremlins in the back. It smells weird, too. Yeah. It really does. I mean, like it's, but, really, it's really not a knock on the place itself. Just more like it, it's just a fact. Be, be, <laughs> because they sell this, we'll let it slide. I don't, I don't care if they're fucking selling gremlins in the back. No, I don't Fuck care that. either. Dude, they, they have they, a bunch. They sell this shit. Dude, no, Rubens has – that's the place I go to when I need some, like, gourmet stuff in a pinch. Dude. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, and I'm super, I was super happy to find those cherries. I bought them on a pinch too when we we needed some cherries for another video that we were shooting. I was like, I need cherries, Dude. and I'm not using maraschino cherries at all, absolutely not. And so the, I found those, and I'm just like, best thirty dollars on cherries I ever spent. Dude, yes, yeah, these they things, are thirty dollars for that fucking little jar right over there, and it's absolutely worth it. Worth it. It's I'm, absolutely worth it. It it says that they're wild cherries from Italy. I mean, they're probably from Reynosa for all I know, but I I Doesn't wouldn't matter. care if they were. <laughs> I wouldn't care if they were. They are so fucking good. 
And I guess for the podcast, they they allegedly allegedly are haunted with gremlins in the back <laughs> for for legal purposes. Gosh, I hate that word. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. I mean, I know there's some like legal implications <laughs> as to like absolutely why one would need to use. It, the it word. hasn't been proven yet, uh, but uh, allegedly. But at the same time, just like no, I heard, I heard like, someone whispering Gizmo in the back, and I I have my suspicions. <laughs> Dude, but uh, you introducing me to these cherries and that uh, that Jameson drink. Oh my god, the best. I mean, oh my god, that's generally what sharing cocktails. Like, oh yeah, bro. Basically, I think you know, getting to the heart of like why I like to do this, why it's so much, like, or why I may retain information. They just always this stuff always reminds me of good times. Yeah, I mean. Potentially, it, it could create a, a horrible time, but for the most part, even even horrible times, give it time. You know, tragedy is you know uh, tragedy plus time equals comedy. You know, like oh, oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean it's not funny right now. Yeah, give but, it some time. Yeah, and by, by like give it some time and just like just give it a day or two, and we'll oh be looking God. back at this, and it's it, gonna be oh, remember, hilarious. Remember that time, Fuck I know. Up. In fact, actually, I think that is what. That outset or that outlook is what has skewed my like worldview or how I view things. I'm just like things tend to never be serious, and you know what? To be honest, after a few of these or anything, very few things do be do end up being serious. I mean, it's always yeah, a good yeah. time, right? But oh shit, forgot my forgot my point. <laughs> well, you know what? I wanted your advice on something else, man. Because one of the things that I wanted to start, and I'm glad I'm gonna try to start it this coming year, and I didn't do it in 2020 because man, 2020 has been a fucking dumpster fire shit show but in the next year what i want to do i want to have a new tradition where i want to get a good bottle that that is deliberately good and pricey right mm-hmm. and you only drink that bottle on on a good day I have, a really good day i have one of those and you want to evaluate where how how the year was based off of how much of the bottle is gone if i had started in in 2020 january 2020 the bottle would still be fucking brand new bro yeah there's nothing <laughs> uh there's hardly anything that was just like man this is this is worth celebrating over you no, know no. i i actually i have one bottle like that and honestly i did not touch it this year in 2020 i got it when uh it's i got it it's a lafroy bottle Right. right. I got it at the distillery proper, like in Isla, did like went to the distillery and was able to use a device that's called a Valinch, right? Basically it's like a copper it's like a copper pipe or a pipet of sorts, right? Okay. So you stick this Valinch inside <laughs> funny enough, right? So <laughs> You know, that's e- what she e- said. each each cask, you know, that's why I was like, that is what she said, because each cask always has an opening. It's got a hole. Right. And there that hole is covered by a type of cork or something. Right. Something to cover it. That is called a bung hole. <laughs> exactly. I'm just like, <laughs> just like <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I already knew that it, prior to this tour. Right. Like at Lafroy, it was done by this uh, lovely lady over there. Her name's Shirlene best fucking tour guide ever because she was uh she was super cool gave no bullshit and she was just like you boys look like you know how to have a drink like yeah. so let's just skip with all the pleasantries and bullshit you know to go through like this is what we do she i mean she asked us a few probing questions and all of us there it was uh eight german guys and me <laughs> so like she asked us a few questions and we knew things about lefroy so she's like okay cool i know i'm not gonna I don't need to do this. Here's what we're here's how we're gonna do the tour instead. All right. All right. So that's why, like, at the end of it all, right? You know, after we got through some more, like, a couple of like personal storied histories of like what happens over at Lafroig. At the end of it all, we got to choose our choose what we would like from their own personal storehouses. There was a selection of casks there, right? Yeah, yeah. And so we were able to get a sample of each little one, and I was just like, that one, that one is the one that is speaking to me. And Shirlene was like, I, you've chosen the devil's cask. And I, was just, and I was like, the devil's cask? And then she pulls me to the other side, and then you see the cask is lovingly labeled 666. That's just, I mean, that's just how it worked out, right? So it's uh, a coincidence, just a yeah, number. Yeah, I mean, because I, I couldn't see it on the other side. She could see that, so she was like, I, the devil's cask, right? So, <laughs> so popped open the bunghole stuck this copper of a lynch into the bunghole and pulled out like pulled out the Lafroy whiskey and and like put it inside my own pint 
bottle, right? It is one of the most unique Scotch whiskeys I've ever had. I I gush when I open it just to smell it, but and I always want to drink it when something good has happened. And this is the first year I have not touched it whatsoever. It's been a because, year. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I got that in 2018. Two years, and like I've only had two, maybe three drams from it whatsoever, like from that, you know? And uh, and yeah, this year I haven't touched it at all because there hasn't been anything like, I mean, good things have happened this year, but not like, you know, some things that have happened last year where it was just like, man, where you're on a month, two month, th- come almost like a three month hot streak where like, fuck, man, everything oh, yeah. is going well, you know? So, I mean, I know like when it comes to alcohol, we drink, we can drink when there are good times. We drink, especially when there are bad times. I mean, yeah. it it's happening now. I mean, ever since March, right? Like it is like it is a it is a blessing as a family business, right? And you know, just good overall of how much like sales can increase and have increased during this time. But at the same time, like it sucks to know why yeah, because yeah. people are at home, people cannot go out people are sad so you know we treat outside wounds with rubbing alcohol we treat inside wounds with drinking alcohol with drinking alcohol you know and we have been and it's like and we me myself you know like and i would say like us like writ large we have largely been like (laughs) self-medicating yeah yeah. you know it's why quarantine with everybody came out like 10 15 pounds like those that like truly quarantined you know like I'm glad you mentioned that because when the in the, in the past two podcast episodes, like my my main, uh, I, I don't know if I would even call it like a logo or whatever, but <sighs> it, it was like the white background. It was a picture of me with the, the killing time with Hector Sanchez and I have the blue shirt and the cap on, right? Mm-hmm. That picture was a test photo that I took because I was going to do headshots of a new employee that we had, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't have a camera assistant or anything, so I took that photo uh it was on the day that shit went real for for covid right so locked like march or yeah it was back in march okay so i was on a good streak of going to the gym eating right same Uh, same here same here everything was like woo. everything was on the up and up so when when i took that photo it was it was the same day that here in the building that that we're shooting this uh we share it with an architectural company right Mm -hmm. that same day fucking nobody showed up nobody it was really just us uh like the advertising team yeah the architects fucking nobody showed up and they were they were like oh you have to go to you have to go to the grocery store you have to go to whoever like you can't pick up toilet paper paper towels they're all gone now and i was thinking bullshit no way it was that same day that i took yeah, that it's like, photo, on, right? like we cannot be this like like yes this is serious and yes we should be preparing but like how did it get this ridiculous that fast that fast well when i took that that photo i was doing great i was doing fucking great and then the work for me fucking stopped i didn't i practically didn't do shit for two to three months and for the first month and a half i liked it Mm -hmm. you know i was just i was staying home i had like a little routine that i kind of like i could just wake up late so did you pick up any hobbies within this month and a half fucking no no. (laughs) fucking (laughs) no all right other than like I had a routine of just waking up late, have uh, have lunch in in the middle of the afternoon, just sit in the backyard, have a couple of beers, and it was great. And then the boredom really set in, mm-hmm. and then it was like a month and a half. And like, so when I took that photo, everything was going great. And then when I did the the uh, the podcast with Gabby, man, I, I gained like close to fifteen pounds, and that's why I, I saw that photo. I mean, look, look, look at that fat. Well, not that one. Not not you. He's fat too. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> the other guy. The, the other guy with the chipmunk cheeks. <laughs> that motherfucker. Yeah. Oh Jesus, fucking Christ. Whatever. He's still pretty handsome. Nah, as fuck, nah okay? he's fucking chunky and fuck it. There, there has to be. If if I were to do those, uh, uh, those lineage things where you're, you know you you spit in a box and it tells you your family history there's mm-hmm. someone someone on the fucking sanchez side fucked a chipmunk i am i'm, I'm certain <laughs> yeah, i'm certain if i do that it's gonna be somewhere one of my grandfathers someone it's it's fucking it's it, it's in here dude i i've lost uh seven ten pounds something like that so like now my pants are fitting better actually yeah. i gotta i gotta get new pants i had to buy a new Woo! belt yesterday 
It's all fucking here. Yeah. It's all fucking here. They, Dude. They, there's no such thing as targeted weight loss or anything <laughs> like that. I don't know if you talked about that with Gabby on that podcast, but like some people are just like, no, I just want to hit fat over here. I'm just like, you can't do can't that. You can't do that. You can't just like, I'm just going to like rotate my core. How do you stay long. skinny? Um, well, you barbecue a lot of vegetables. I oh, yeah. That. Okay. So, one, I barbecue a lot of vegetables. And then, like, two, I mean, well, look, it ebbs and flows for me. I mean, um, the most I weighed was, and this was uh, before October, September, late September, weighed myself. I was about like 168 pounds, right? Yeah, what I wouldn't do. So, what yeah, I wouldn't well, do to weigh 168. Well, yeah, but you're taller and well, I'm just. How short. tall are you? 5'6. Okay, well, I'm 5'11. Yeah, so, so yeah. yeah, you can. You, you mean, there's like some weight distribution that can happen, right? Yeah. Like for me, when somebody was just like telling me, like, dude, you're looking like you've been working out, man. You're looking like big. <laughs> you know, and it's, a, and it's a sincere compliment. Yeah. But when that happens, that's when I know you're fat. <laughs> like because that has always been the thing you know like you know uh people will start off with saying that because like i gain weight up here yeah like i should look, look I, buff bro. yeah exactly like looking buff and it all like comes up over <laughs> I don't here exercise. And, and i'm just like i'm, I'm really not fair. and i say like and i'm pretty gracious about it you know i'm just like dude thanks you know appreciate it yada yada but i'm like oh my god okay i gotta go i gotta go but you yeah, know that's nothing, uh, when when gabby was here and we're talking about exercising I, I was making fun of guys with like bitch tits because she was trying to think of like the medical term for when guys gain a lot of weight and i was boobs? like ah, they're, they're called uh man boobs or bitch tits <laughs> and i was okay, fucking club. looking at this shit like oh my god <laughs> and here i am I, i'm throwing stones in the glass house mm -hmm. fucking a dude. well i i'm working on it like i'm running Ooh. and i fucking hate fucking running mm -hmm. so normally what I do is like well actually to be honest like okay so I was well overweight like normally 155 would have been like my hey that's your that's your uh, red line to like get your ass in gear right but no I was 168 going into October right I'm like dude that's pretty heavy the, the heaviest I've ever been and this was actually after my first year of college was 195 pounds I did not gain the freshman 15 I literally gained the freshman 55 like that's <sighs> dude yes exactly like imagine a 5'6 David right over here at 195 pounds like pushing 200 I was a I was a webble I was just an egg <laughs> okay I just like was just like not even like round I was just ovoid like so yeah so oh, that was yeah. the most that I had ever weighed and so when I was getting like getting close to pushing 170 I was like fuck dude so what did I do at that time I actually participated in sober October how long did you last I lasted two weeks me too wait but wait <laughs> I lasted two weeks, and in fact, I actually, at the time, like, with my significant other, like, she was actually, I was like, dude, fuck this. Like, I I had had a series of, like, a bad, like, three to four days. Like, day one was, like, living in heck, right? Where you are my, like, you, it wasn't terrible. Actually, the first two days were, like, living in heck. You weren't, it wasn't terrible. You were just mildly inconvenienced at every step of the way every like for those two days yeah so, you know waking up and trying to get out the door and your belt loop gets caught on the door handle right uh hitting your funny bone on your knee you know you just hit something like that little things like that or like hey uh you actually got my order wrong over at starbucks not something that i would actually turn around and like bitch somebody out for i mean shit happens you know i used to yeah. work in like a situation like that but you know Again, little things like that that it just all adds up. That it all, dude, it, it all adds two up. Two weeks later, dude, yeah. <laughs> you know, because actually, first week of sober October wasn't so bad, and I knew the second week was going to be harder than the first one. Yeah. Okay, um, it's just because, I'm, like, dude, I'm used to having at least a drink a day, right? Like, or if I, but on, but. Actually, sometimes if I didn't drink for two or three days, I would kind of make it up on the fourth day. So I wasn't doing myself. I really wasn't doing myself any favors, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or and it's not even that I felt like I needed to catch up from the other days. That's just kind of how it worked out. I mean, good time, like good times go fast when you're having fun. So do shots and drinks and things like that too. Oh, yeah. Especially like when most of like your like best friends and just good friends that you like to hang out with like to throw some back or work over at a bar. You know, I like to go. And support my friends at the places that I that I frequent at. I wish I can go to more because I just, I mean, even given these times, like even being out and about, I'll still like frequent a bar 
in the sense that like I might pop in my head and be like, <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm I'm comfortable with this. But then if I see like ten people sitting in the same area, like close together, then I'm like, okay, nah. So I mean, I'll like pick and like pick and choose my like pick and choose my battles, yeah. right? <laughs> I I went out last night and it was the first time that I've gone out. How did it feel? Weird. Weird, right? It, it did feel weird. Uh, for, for for a moment last night, it felt normal. Mm-hmm. Just for a moment. But then it all comes rushing back like, man, anyone, I, I, I went out and I had dinner and drinks outside mm-hmm. uh, of a restaurant here uh, in McAllen. And for a moment, it felt normal. And the moment that I, I realized like, hey, feels normal. Like, I like this. And then it, it all dawned back on me like... Any one of these motherfuckers can have COVID, and I just happen to breathe it in, and so yeah. So that's uh, that's why I say I'll check out a place first, because at the end of the day, you know everybody can do everything that they can to be as safe as possible, right? Yeah. I mean, especially like uh, now I'm like, taking my vitamin C. I, I heard that okay, vi- vitamin, vitamin C, vitamin, C, vitamin D. D. Yep. Yeah, I'm in that shit. So you know, it's uh. I mean, I won't uh, deny or even pretend to think that whatever I'm doing isn't a risk, you know. Uh, but at the same and at the same time, like dude, you've seen my bar, it is a. Uh, it's like I have a home bar. There's nothing over. There's nothing that I couldn't make at home that I couldn't get at a bar, right? Yeah. But it's different being there, like just being in a place where. Sure, your bartender is a friend over there, but every now and then, like, there's some there's something that I can't get at home that I could get over at a bar whenever I go over there, right? It's it's a cabin fever. Yeah, yeah, you can, and I get especially well you way more than me. If if we wanted to make an old fashioned or I don't know a Moscow Mule or something like we we can we can make one. Yeah, make one just as good as if you were to go to a bar, but it's it's going out yeah away from home away from work that makes it more relaxing and someone caters to you like i don't want to make the drink you fucking make the drink right so and you say it nicer yeah of course you say it nicer (laughs) you know of course i'm just like hey a fucking moscow mule can i please get an old-fashioned you know Uh, you know if never hey 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 i would hey chop chop dude i would shoot somebody yeah like a pay like if it was like no, not, I, not a, like am, a customer i'd be like what the hell's wrong with you yeah because I, be I was on nice. the other side at that point yeah right? we're not dogs we're not like nobody's a dog over there nobody yeah, yeah. like of course i don't want like, to imply that that's the way that you do it no <laughs> <laughs> it's like no man i mean i just i just like to go i like to go one see my friends two yeah support my friends especially like do you especially now especially now like it's almost uh of course like i say like i will pick and choose like when i go i will scope out a place and if i'm just like mm, no not today dude not today it's not gonna happen today but yeah. i'd like to go support my friends i like to you know i got hard-earned cash and i want to spend it and i want to give it to them like yeah, i want yeah. to give it to this business who needs it right now i want to give it to that bartender who happens to be my friend um, and at the same time is like doing everything that they can just to like stay safe, do what it is that they love, you know, which is craft cocktails, uh, serve people, things yeah. like that. You know, there is a, I don't know, for me personally, I think there is a service in like poetry giving, or at least the way I go about it and the way I think about it, because you're giving the best of yourself to somebody you are, you know, taking care of somebody from start to finish and just giving them a great experience. It's kind of the same thing. I try to do the same thing over at Holiday, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. I, I work with booze over there and uh, it helps It helps that I have worked with these like products like intimately. It's why I can sit over here and you and I can have a chat, like chat while I'm like mixing up some old fashions, right? Yeah, yeah. I would do that often and uh like behind the bar well now i'm in a different sec like different area of it right more in the retail setting in which i can coach people and tell people what they can do with this right some people would just come in and be like no i just want this and some coke and cool i mean awesome so let me get your opinion on this yeah okay so this is this is episode three right Mm -hmm. episode three of uh killing with uh killing time with Hector sanchez podcast right are we, was, killing, are we killing time? Or are we I just, think so. Are we living time? No, it's, it's, it's a complete waste of time, David. Oh, you fine. Then. It's a, f- f- fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're living time. 
Okay. I don't think so. This is just uh, we're we're just uh, wasting time until the inevitable black mist, uh, uh, you know, succumbs us both. Mm-hmm. But I was thinking, you know, like because this is only the third, and I'm I'm kind of I'm I'm trying to get into the groove, right? Let me get your 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 opinion on this. First of all, I think I've noticed that while doing these podcasts, I think that it's more entertaining if the podcast is more conversational than. Than an interview, like tell me where you grew up, David. No, where did you go to school, David? Like that kind of stuff. Like people are gonna fucking tune out with that, right? So it's more it, conversation. <laughs> like your boy. <laughs> I, I I care. I yeah. care, David. No, but these random viewers, they don't care. <laughs> but okay, so if it's if it's more conversational, and then the other thing is with the uh, the COVID pandemic or whatever mm-hmm. one of the things that i discovered that i can't believe i i didn't hear about this guy he's, it's a comedian named uh uh tom segura have you heard of him tom segura yes. so uh like he's a comedian i didn't know who the hell he was up until this covid thing right and he also has a podcast and during his podcast they'll do like little segments and i'm thinking man should i do that for my podcast so in his podcast, he'll do things like uh, if you're asking if you'd like a willing guinea guinea pig, the answer is yes. Yes, it's like if I if <laughs> I do a thing where I ask people if I don't know what to do, I will ask them pick one, yes or no. Right, and I leave basically what I say is I'll leave it up to the gods. <laughs> right. Well, w- with him, they'll do things like would you rather, like would you rather do A or would you rather do B. I love these games. Oh, dude. No, I do. That's like, well, I'll play this. I'll, uh, I will do this all the time. See, every yeah, like, day, and I might make some silly fucking faces in between, but dude, like, I, I, okay, like so I, I love these games. I, I wouldn't want to steal their thunder. I, not that it's that original. It's not that fucking original. Okay, let, let's it's do like something else. Dare, and like, I've heard, like, I'm just like, I've done every dare in the book. Have you? Just have a, you? Have you really? Just about. I mean, and everything is always just like, okay, fine. You're just doing that. Okay, so th- this is completely unscripted, and I-, I haven't told you about this whatsoever, right? Even so let, let, let's just say yeah. in the podcast in the future, right, with mm-hmm. future guests, I'm going to say, okay, so when you come on on the podcast, I want you to come on. We're going to play a game of, uh, I-, I don't know what, what the exact name of it is, but I'm, I'm going to tell you three stories. Mm-hmm. One is a lie, and two are true, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And it's up to you to figure out, okay, which which one of the three that's a lie, right? Right. So, we'll we'll try it out right now. Okay. So, all right, all right. I'm ready. Are you ready? My okay. body is ready. Okay. Okay. One is one is a lie. Two are true. Okay. Scenario number one. Okay. Once I saw a guy as closely as I'm sitting to you, Mm -hmm. I once saw a drunken guy jack off a dog with his bare foot. Scenario number one. Scenario number two. That's that's real. I've seen that. (laughs) (laughs) Scenario number two. Uh, once as a child, I I accidentally it was an accident. I I set my neighbor's garage on fire. Uh huh. Story number two. Story number two. Story number three. Once I saw a dude die on the side of the road. Those are three little headlines of a story. Two two of those things are true. One is bullshit. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking that would be a good thing to have for 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 podcast. Like maybe I don't know if I would open with it or close with it. Maybe it'd be a segment that I think would be interesting. Oh yeah, it'd be interesting because okay. I'm just like man, it's like how how would, well how well do I know? You? Yeah, how how well do you know me? And we've known how how long do you think we've known each other? Um, since 2015. Yeah, about 2015. So five years. Yeah, yeah, five yeah. years we, we've known each other. And hang out, shared many a drink, and had quite a few barbecues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still think I still think about your uh, grilled peaches and ice cream. Oh, dude, we gotta make more grilled peaches and barbecue. Yeah, dude. So one is okay. bullshit, two are true. Which one is bullshit? I'm gonna. S- Have I seen a drunk guy jack off a dog barefooted? Is that bullshit? Is it bullshit that I, as a child, 
accidentally set my neighbor's garage on fire? Or is it bullshit that once I saw a dude die on the highway? Which one is bullshit? Set the person's garage on fire. You are correct, sir. Dude, I'm just like, I was just like <laughs> I've seen that. It was no accident. Dude, there was no accident. <laughs> you lit that person's house on fire on purpose. Okay? It was on purpose. Yeah. What did they do to, re- to uh, you know, deserve that? <laughs> okay, so the whole garage saying, thing hey, there's, was... nothing, there's nothing more pure than a child aggrieved. Oh, uh, no, no, no. That... Uh, t- t- uh, trust me, I've seen the way my son reacts when he feels he is hurt. He lights shit and on slided. fire left and right. And, uh, no, he just throws himself in his room and he actually like locks the door. I'm just like, bro, you're fucking four. No, Look. And I'm just like, okay, but to me, I'm just like, okay, you are hurt. You're hurt. Yeah. I may not think it's all that important, but to a four year old, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But you don't seem like the pyromaniac that I was because I lit my house on fire. Like literally my Seriously? Own, like, yeah. But oh, like five shit. times. Yeah. Five times. Five times? Five Fucking times I lit my house, uh, my own house on fire for shits and giggles. Um, I wanted to see what would happen, and then there was one time where I just, I dude, I I was like uh I think like uh, 11, 12 years old or so, you know, yeah, went like scared fire. of the, went scared of the dark, but like I I liked a I like a light on. <laughs> Like that's what I, all those pyrotechnics say, dude. I like a light on, right? I like the fire, dude. I like a light on, man. I mean, <laughs> I I swear, like, dude, it took my wife like years to just like accept the fact that, like, dude, you leave that stove light on, okay? <laughs> like, you never know. Just leave it on, like, just leave it on, right? It never. Uh, I'm never... The, I'm the same with the fan. I have to hear a fan. I don't care how fucking cold it is. Yeah, I have to hear it. So. It makes me feel better that there's a light on somewhere inside the house, right? And then also, too, the little dude's room is, like, all the way across the house. So it was also it's like, but what if he wakes up and he needs a light and he needs to come over here this way? It's for him as much as it is for me. Right? <laughs> I agree with you. So the last time I lit the house on fire was just that, like, my mom and dad did not want to let me have a light on. They thought I was just scared of the dark, and but I was not. I just like a light. So... Um, I had put a towel under, like, the door, right? So that way they couldn't see that there was a light on and turned the light on. But it turns out later on that later on that night, the lamp itself actually fell down. It was one of those, like, clip, clip lamps, right? So it okay. unclipped somehow or another, whatever, but it fell on the floor. Our floors were carpet at the time. The lamp was hot enough to light the carpet on fire. Fuck. Yes. So your boy over here would pro- like would not be here unless it was my brother who woke up. We shared a bunk bed at the time. He woke up because he was breathing in smoke. He was coughing. Carlo saved your life. He saved our lives. Fuck. He went like he saved our lives. Good on you, Carlos. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. I mean, it's like if there's a if I've never really thanked him like personally for that, like we'll let it be. You've there. never thanked your brother for saving your life. Look, I forgot what happened five seconds ago, much less like whatever <laughs> happened like 15 years ago. Okay, so I'm like I'm pretty sure I thanked him, but at the same time, you know, it's like well if I didn't, fuck like that is something that stays with me now. Carlos, you have to be watching this, Carlos. Carlos, I'm buying you a drink the next time I see you. Because I this wouldn't happen unless he woke you up. You saved one of my best friends. Dude, dude. Bam. Dude, so he, if he didn't wake up from coughing, like from breathing in smoke, dude, I was You would have You would have both I died. I would have died of like carbon, like carbon monoxide inhalation. Like I would have died from that. So like it lit the carpet on fire. He woke up. He like, but he couldn't also open the door because there was the towel there, dude. It was like a huge thing. And then yeah, afterwards it was later on. My parents like figured out. It's like, well, he's not really scared. Just just leave a light on. (laughs) Just leave a light on. You know, I I dude, I felt bad for weeks. I mean, we like I remember that story. We slept inside like the, the, the hallway because it was the safest place for all of us at the time. Like it was a thing. It was a thing for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Like, man, I like a light on. (laughs) Long story short, I like a light on. 
I am 35 years old now. I still leave the stove light on. I mean, I don't have a light on inside my room or anything, but like, I just need a light somewhere in the house. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know why. But at the same time, I would argue that like, there's more than one Mexican in this valley who just likes a light on inside the house. Do you, I, I would say that in, in order to play this game of two are true, one is bullshit. You have to have the, 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 the most unique reaction to that scenario. When I give the, the, the three scenarios, they really want to be like, dude, where did you see a drunk guy jack off a dog with his foot? Or you saw a dude die on the, on the side of the road? When the fuck did that happen? I've seen a dude die on the side of the road, man. Dude, tell me about that. That was actually, a, that was in Austin. Let's compare stories. Well, at the time, I was just like, I'm going to take some time off. <laughs> uh, I mean, I laugh, but uh, like at the same time, it was just like, Yee. yeah, it's it's fucking horrific. Right, right. It's just like we, 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 I mean, we as people just try to laugh something off or use like humor to kind of deflect like the seriousness it, 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 of it. Tragedy but, in time. It, yeah. it makes comedy. Right. So, um, Somebody got off the bus stop, right? And they started riding their bike, and it was like the bus driver who clipped the, like, he clipped the drive, like the, the bike rider. And so then, so he clipped him, and then all you hear is like, like, and you were driving and you saw it happen. No, no, no. I'm in the bus. You're in the fucking bus? Yes, I'm in the fucking bus. Holy shit. Yes. And I was just like, and the guy gets off, and then, like, phone calls start happening. And I'm just like, I just see somebody over here just on the floor. You felt the fucking thunk. Yes! Holy shit, dude. I was going to class. Oh, fuck. I was going to class. And that's what happened. And I'm just like, dude, I'm going to go home. I'm going to go home. I'm going to, like, this, like, I didn't see, I guess, like, I technically didn't see it, but... The bike, it was like the bicyclist who got off also got ran over. <laughs> and that also, you know, like got clipped, got run over by the bus. And it was like, dude, I'm not going to, I'm not going to class today. And this is like, just was like, this is what happened. And then later on, like I actually had an exam that day too. Uh, but dude, that was way too much. That was way too much for my like we. I don't want to say like adolescent mind, but at the same time, I'm just like, dude, I, I could not handle that. Like I could not process. Um, so emailed my prof and he was like, well, okay, I'm going to have to do this. And so then he actually like two days later, then finally like, you know, headline comes out and he's like, oh, okay. Well, you were not well, yeah, to- David was on the bus. Yeah. He was on the bus when that happened, Fuck. you know? So, so, okay, so walk me through this. Okay, so you're on the bus and you're going to class order because you're in college at the time. Yeah, living on 35th, 35th and Guadalupe, living on, living off of that area, right, right next to a bar that was called Nasties. Okay, so you're, watering holes. <laughs> you're, on, you're on the bus and it runs over a bicyclist. Mm-hmm. What happened? Like, do you all get out of the bus and like... Uh, are you okay? Is he just like splattered on the side of the road? He or she or <laughs> it was a he and not splattered, but like, you know, just limp on the side. Just like, what do you what do you do there? And the guy, uh, the bus driver is calling, right? Um, it, and then not too long later is when you hear like sirens and things like that. I mean, it could have like could be just like that's just a uh, SOP, right? But at the same time, like I didn't want to stick around for, I didn't want to stick around for that, you know. Like that was like, do, 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 do. Oh. oh. Did you know it when it happened, or you think ah, it's just a speed bump, or did did the the bus? No, driver... I knew when the bus was going, and you heard like, <laughs> like dude, <laughs> okay, something serial happened. Not even serious. This is like dude, serial. But yeah, that's when the bus driver broke real hard after those like few bumps. Then that's when it was like something serious happened. What the hell happened? You know. But Fuck. yeah, I mean, look, we're not. I mean, at some point, we're all gonna be witnesses to tragedy. You know, I mean, that happened. That happened like a long time ago. I was nineteen twenty at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, not something that I definitely like think about often but at the same time like you know comes up every now and then you know dude especially well, like now it's like which one like which one's the line i'm just like this one 
Dude. It's like we've both we both been there. <laughs> okay, so when when I saw the dude yeah. down on the side of the road, this this is my story. Okay, so I was going up to Notre Dame uh, to see a cu- a cousin of mine was graduating right mm-hmm. for Notre Dame, and it was the same year that Obama went. Right, it was that same fucking year. So. Uh, me and a handful of my family members drove from here in McAllen, Texas, all the way up into like the northern, uh, eastern side of Texas. We're on this long highway, and it's just it's, it's just a two lane highway. Yeah. We're fucking in the middle of nowhere, way off. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Way off in the distance, we see a plume of black smoke. And when you're out there in the middle of nowhere, you're figuring, okay, well, someone's burning trash. You're, yeah. in the, you're in the fucking middle of nowhere. We get to this point where we see a car upside down burning. There's a large, heavy set woman that's crying hysterically. There's two, par- two cars parked on the side of the road. One guy waves us down to stop. Like, we're in the fucking middle of nowhere, bro. Yeah. So this guy stops us and uh, we stop and we talk to this guy and we, you know, we, we roll down the window and uh, the guy says, hey, I think someone is inside that fucking car that's on fire. So my my cousin. What a thing to say. I think. Yeah, it's like I. Well, that's why the woman was crying hysterically. The, the woman that was crying hysterically was the co-worker they were they were driving in two separate cars together Mm -hmm. it seemed like the the car veered off the side of the road it it seems according to her like maybe he fell asleep or something yeah went off the side of the road hit a ditch flipped over and that's where the car you know is upside down on fire she's thinking the the dude's still in there and it's her her co-worker her boss is inside that car and when we're looking at this car that's on fire it's upside down and there's fire coming out of all windows driver side passenger side back seat both sides fire is coming out you can't see inside of the car that's super intense super uh, and so if he was inside of the car he's fucking dead yeah or if not just like he's gone there, there, it, there's, you know? there's fire coming out of where the windows should be. Yeah. Like, there's no way. There's no way you can get inside that car. But my, my brother and I and my little cousin. Who Older or younger brother? My, my younger brother okay. and my younger cousin who's studying to become a doctor. Mm-hmm. He wasn't a doctor at the time. But we all like, okay, well, let's maybe... We can, I, and I remember saying, if he's still inside that car, he's fucking dead. Mm-hmm. There's no fucking way he's alive, Man. right? Imagine if you're inside, you're you're still seat buckled, upside down inside a car. There's fire coming out of the window. There's no fucking way you're alive. Yeah. But we figure, okay, let's let's see if we can do fucking anything. Yeah, I mean, you know, when, so when you're call when you're called to go beyond. Yeah, to go above and beyond, right? Like, so, I mean, what do you what do you do then? You know, it's I'll like, tell well, you what we did. Ah. So, w- my my younger brother, myself, and my my cousin who's studying to become a doctor, we all get out of the car. It's we, like this is the point where I just drink more whiskey. Dude, just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the riveting part of the story. <laughs> it gets fucked up. Yeah, keep up, please, please continue. The, the story gets more fucked up as we go. So, okay, we get out of the car and we approach the car. And the the heat that's coming out of the car is more intense than I've ever felt before. Yeah. There's almost like an invisible force field where we got as close as we could. And it felt like if you step one more step further, you're going to catch on fire. Like the yeah. heat, like we couldn't get more than 15 feet from the car. Couldn't. Dude, yeah, we, those are all combustible, like, I mean, dude. glues and things that hold that together just, you know, create crazy amounts of heat right there. so like, so we're on the side of the road it's a two-lane highway we're waist high in dry grass 
the thing that stopped the car was a telephone pole. So the telephone pole and the car are next to each other. Upside, the car is upside down next to the telephone pole. The fire is going up the telephone pole, right? Mm-hmm. We're waist high, dry, fucking yellow grass. Yeah. We try to get at least 15 feet from the car. Couldn't fucking do it. We couldn't take one more step. Like the heat is so fucking yeah, it intense. It makes your face feel tight. Like you just like, dude, your face is like. Could, we, we we physically could not get closer and we're, we're trying to you know, squat down look inside the car couldn't see shit because fire is coming outside the window yeah couldn't see fucking shit man so we we back up uh a truck driver stops and he tries to help us my little brother says hey i found somebody and we're like fucking what so alongside this uh highway there there's a house in the background and there's a barbed wire fence Mm -hmm. this dude who is in the car alone the boss of that heavyset woman that was crying hysterically Uh uh-huh he got ejected from the car unbeknownst to her she had no idea she she was under the impression that he's still in there but he wasn't Mm -hmm. when the car veered off the road and flipped over, he got ejected. She didn't know that. My little brother found him face down next to a barbed wire fence, and he was all fucked up. Like he was face down, but the way that his neck was tucked in under his chin, like you could tell this dude, his, his neck was fucking broken. Yeah. So my cousin, who's studying to become a doctor, Tried to, you know, feel his back. We, we tried talking to him. He's unresponsive, but he's alive and breathing. And yeah, so like, it's one of the it's one of those uh, movie tropes. Dude. Right? Just because you break someone's neck doesn't mean you killed them. So the thing like, is, they can like you broke their neck and they're like, dude, they're out. They're incapacitated. You did everything you needed to do to like, I mean, just to get whatever it is the protagonist needed to get done right right but like you didn't kill anybody sometimes or sometimes right you did not kill them you you just broke their neck you just broke his neck that's it so they're incapacitated for your needs but like you didn't kill them right but that's not any better (laughs) so so this guy face down in the dirt next to a barbed wire fence still alive Mm -hmm. still breathing unresponsive knocked out it's me, my younger brother, and my younger cousin, and some truck driver dude. And we all know that we can't move this guy. Yeah, you can't move. Because be, re, re, remember, the truck or, or, or the uh, the car that he got ejected from is on fire. Yeah. And the fire is spreading through dry know, grass. Through dry, through dry grass that's already waist, waist high. high. Right. So the, the fire is coming closer and closer. Uh-huh. And we know that if we move this motherfucker, he's still alive. He's still breathing. Uh-huh. If we move him, we could fuck him up more. And he can sue y'all. Right. I hate that. Like, oh, Dude. like I'm being a good person and I can still get in trouble for being a good person. So we negotiated at, at that moment. We all looked at each other and we said, OK, we all know. If we move this motherfucker, we could kill him. Yeah. But if we don't, the fire is spreading and it's getting closer to him and us. We're in the fucking middle of nowhere. So at that time, I know I, mean, I know you're telling me the story, but at the same time, I'm like, when you made the decision, right? Like what like what was the greater good in that? You know? Well, because what, at that point it's like now you got now you gotta be pragmatic and utilitarian what's gonna like right what it will cause like even though this may cause harm what is the greatest good you know so at that point what was the greatest good so we 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 all made an agreement like okay he's lying face down in the dirt Uh uh-huh we don't have a stretcher to properly lift him up and and my my younger cousin who's studying to become a doctor he has the medical experience like okay well i know how we should move them experience but not expertise well and at the same time we don't have the equipment either yeah you don't have have a gurney you don't have a gurney you don't have a stretcher you don't have anything to like keep the you know this gentleman stable his his spine and his neck might be at the the, the hairline if we just move him a little bit crack and he's dead he's still alive 
So we all say, okay, well, when the fire gets yay far away, we move them. But for right now, we do not. Yeah. And we're all like, okay, this, th- this is how it's going to happen. So we all kind of look at each other. Okay. This is the way. L- right. This is the way. This is the way. And, and we're all just going to fucking live by it. So I was really surprised with how fast an ambulance came out of the fucking. And we were in the fucking middle of nowhere, bro. Yeah. The middle of fucking nowhere. So where is the middle of nowhere, though? Like. It's, Right at the border of, I think we were at the border of Texas and Oklahoma because we're going up okay, uh, to yeah, yeah. Notre Dame. And it was a full day's drive. That whole, well, I shouldn't say it. Oh, well, fuck it. I went this far. Uh, for, for me personally, the whole, the whole trip was fucked for me. That was the first day, David. That was the first day of a horrible trip. It was, just, it was, all, it was awful. I love my cousin. I'm a grad, he, he graduated from Notre Dame. But, oh, that trip sucked. And that was the first. The, the, the trip was fucked from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, like oh, a, a, an ambulance came relatively soon mm-hmm. before it got to the point where we're like, okay, if the fire comes to this point, we're fucking moving this guy, whether he dies or not, because we don't want him to burn alive. So uh, the ambulance came. They tried to to do CPR, but he was gone. It didn't last long enough. Yeah. Uh, so that's how I, yeah, like that dude, the first day of a wonderful field trip. <laughs> man, uh, tragedy is a s- yeah. strange teacher, man. Yeah, I, I don't know who the woman was. I don't know who the dude was. I, we're just there and we tried to see like, Hey, did how, you make it? How old were you when this happened? Well, it was when Obama went to go visit uh, Notre Dame. So, so I mean, about you know, 30, 40 years ago then. <laughs> a, long, a long time. <laughs> it's been long a, time. <laughs> it's been about 30, 40 yeah, years. 30 years. Yeah, about eight years, really. But 30, 40 years ago, feeling like, right? Dude, <laughs> yeah. No one wants to know about the dog that got jerked off? <laughs> it, it, well, I mean, if anything, because... Is that animal abuse? I would imagine because it wasn't Look, done hey, to completion. I don't know. It was not. We we I feel like we've all seen uh Van Wilder. Yeah. Have you seen him? Yeah. And you know when he takes the the cannoli like shells and he jacks off his uh bulldog. <laughs> like he's just like, dude, he just jacks off his bulldog into the like the cannoli shells. And then so it's like I mean, again, it's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but I would, but I would argue to say that giving a male dog who still has his balls a uh, release is a not the most grandiose job. But I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. Is, is that animal abuse or is or, or is it abuse because you didn't do it to completion? That's abuse. You I feel like that's abuse. You can't just start jerking off a dog with no, your No, you can't. Foot. No, you can't. No, you can't. And, and not finish. And not finish as like, dude, dude, dude seriously, as males. The dog has feelings. The dog has feelings. They do. And it's like, as males, if that actually, if that actually ever happened, dude, males, females, that actually happened and nothing ever finished. You can't just get started on a good job and then just quit. And just quit like, dude, <laughs> today was a great day. So what did you do? Well, I quit. Yeah. Because it was great. I was jacking off a dog with my bare feet, and I just stopped halfway uh, through. Yeah, stopped halfway. It was, fuck. Like. But also, too, I'm more interested in the thought process. Like, let me just. It, or it, even, this would be a really good idea if I did. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not actually interested in the action so much as I am, like, the logic it took to get there. To get there? Like, I need to do this. I need to. My, well, dog, my dog needs this. I need this. He, it, need, he needs this. We all need it. Oh, sure. <laughs> It's like sure, we're all adult. Like we're we're human. We we have base needs, and even animals also have base needs too. I'm just wondering where that point happened, where the person thought, "I need to satisfy this here's, animal's here, base here's needs." Here's the thing, like, <laughs> as, like as, how as drunk was alcohol a part of the solution? Well, it was it was part of the situation. <laughs> so we're on we're on topic. <laughs> we are absolutely on topic. <laughs> 
Dude, well, I, I, me personally, I've, I've never had enough booze in my system to think. I want to jack off an animal, uh, dude. No, I was like, well, <laughs> sure. That has to be in you already. So sober. Here's here's what I like to call like a. I mean, it's not like an unknown phenomenon, but maybe there might not be a word to it, but or a phrase. But there is uh, sober moments of clarity that happen after an action is done, like through inebriation alcohol right yeah, where it's yeah. like that was a really good idea and then it's done and then you're like that was not a good idea <laughs> but there's very little time in between that realization and then going to sleep right. <laughs> it's like there there is not that kind of like catharsis that happens where you're just like man that was not a good idea and i shouldn't do that again and i shan't ever ever mm-hmm. from from here on and henceforth <laughs> like i shall never jack off a dog with my feet <laughs> again like but also at the same time who has that conversation <laughs> with themselves dude but at the same time i'm still just like how did you arrive there like how did you arrive at this point that this was a good idea alcohol is a strange vehicle right like it's with- a strange tooth teller and a strange truth teller it like as well like I mean, I don't well, know. let me ask you this: yeah. how how drunk would I have to get you, David, to to watch you jack off a dog with your bare feet? I've never. Ever how been much that alcohol minute. would that take? I would imagine, even for me, you I don't think to... there is enough. There, there, there has to be something in you already that's like, you know what? I'm gonna jack off a dog. So with my bare fucking feet. So that's like. Uh... <laughs> Okay, so you're 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 touching up on two, one, two, maybe three things right over here. One, I don't believe that actually like any amount of alcohol could actually get me to do that, right? Me neither. And then two, you would need to, like, for me to do that, you would need to not use chloroform, but you would need to use some form of, like scopolium or something to like get me to like just do whatever it is that somebody wanted me to do but then also like three, i cannot like imagine you, a scenario of me being so drunk neither can i neither can i like I, that, that sounds like a good idea it's not in me like, even for a laugh right it's like, <laughs> it, it's not it, it's not it's not there it's not in me like even i, I like i'm just trying to think Right. Like it's how not much there. like how much alcohol would I need? It's like there's there's no amount of alcohol that would actually get me to do that. Right. Um, you know I'm gonna touch up on this for right now, but like it still took me it took my fraternity brothers. Yes, I am a dude bro if it doesn't look like it, but I am a dude bro, okay? You look like it. Uh, oh <laughs> well, fuck you too, okay? <laughs> so you know, it took them a good year and a half to get me to watch two girls one cup like i would not fucking watch that i wouldn't like i knew what it, i kind of knew what it was about but it was like nah i'm not gonna like that's not in me to watch it what convinced me to actually watch it was the fact that like we were about to go out and they were just like dude if you do this we'll take care of your bar tabs for the week <laughs> incentive incentive all right i'll watch a three and a half minute like gross video I'd like to do that but like dude it was horrible. Like, I would not, like, if anything, I would actually take that back. Like, to not watch that, to get a week's worth of a bar tap. Like, dude, every single day we go out, like, from Saturday, from when I saw it, up until next Saturday, I could have drank as much as I wanted. If you, like, you come with me, you're taking care of my bar tap. That was the stipulation. That was the deal. I would take that back in a heartbeat, just to, like, ah, like, it's like I had a price <laughs> and it wasn't worth it. It didn't pay. It didn't. It's not pain. I was like, I'm not going to say I'm traumatized over it. But like, again, alcohol was the vehicle to get me to do something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. At the time. I mean, of course, I'm like 22, 23 years old or so. Um, and so I said, OK, cool. I'll do this for this. And I, I'll take that back any day. Just because I'm like, ah. Shit's weird, dude. Shit's like, 
Dude, this is so fun, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, <sighs> dude. Absolutely. And you know what? You know what? Technically, you did this before I did this. Did I? You did. Uh, no. There was a time where you and me, we shot... Uh, we shot something at, was it Centennial? Oh, dude, yeah! And you were with your bartending friends. Dude, with uh, Aldo, Aldo Seha, Christian Corbet, I also had uh, Jason, like, Jason like Perez. like six dude. of your friends. Yeah, dude, we had a, uh, dude, that was fucking fun. It was, like, and that's because I was just the camera guy. Camera guy running eight cameras. Uh, well, dude. Dude. Ah, fuck you. That dude, don't don't even downplay that shit, dude. Like you had like six cameras and and the track, and then what you were doing, <laughs> like. And that was maybe like two years ago, three years ago. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah, dude, you did this before I did this. Uh, and here we are, got yeah. full circle. Here, it's full circle, dude. <laughs> And you know what? I, I was more afraid about doing this podcast for you and your friends. Because, you well, I would imagine that your friends would be m- way more critical. Like, how did you make an old fashioned? How did you make this drink? Well, so that's the thing about, like, my friends that work over in the service industry. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I... Personally, I do not work in the service industry. I work tangentially. Like, well, you, from you, it. you did it but for, like, I work, but, like, for a I certain work... period of time up in Austin in several bars. Right. And so it is it will something it, it is something that will always be a part of me, whatever it is, like whatever considerations I do or anything like that. I mean, dude, it's like honestly for me, like I truly believe it is a noble industry to work in. There's, it's very difficult to make a lot of money in, but sometimes money isn't the fucking factor, the motivating factor. It's just doing, it's just being able to do a job well done and to be able to do it well. So, but when it comes to like my friends and I, right, like we can, like, I have made cocktails for them, things that I have, that I have in my head and I get like some critical and sometimes like mean feedback Right? from your friends yes but that's what i want well like, I, I would imagine so because that's how you progress yeah no and you know uh, after hanging out with you and meeting some of your bartending friends it's have you ever heard the advice of if you ever want to level up no matter what it is that you're doing if you want to level up as a basketball player as a mm-hmm. football player even if you want to ask out girls for I don't know, a hobby or whatever. Yeah. You never you never want to go with the people that are at your level. You always want to go level up. Girls that are out of your league, uh, people that are playing well above how you play for football or basketball. How because you get better. Right. You need a – one needs a goal. Right. Like, and my friends, those that bartend, are continually my goals. I don't work the same way that they do. Like, uh, like I just work retail liquor, and all I want to do is to be able to recommend products that will enhance their experience, their right. at-home experience. If you would like these kinds of things, well, then absolutely I could recommend bars that one can go to, people that you need to talk to, things like that. Uh, it's like, but it's um, – well, after talking to your friends, like back, back in the f- before times, in the before, before times, before before COVID, where, BC, where you would before right, COVID, <laughs> before COVID, when you would have the 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 like the barbecues on Sundays at your place, and you would have your other buddies that were also bartenders, Dude, and we'd shoot the shit like we were just like we were literally riffing like how do I say um like band members. Like a guitarist will play a riff or like a little thing, and then a drummer might find something and just like play off of that, right? Right. Like the folks that came over to like my place, or just like how we talk, we we're literally just like vibing and riffing off of each other. Like, right. Like I, I can remember hanging out with you and your buddies, and we're talking about like like for me, the the staple of a good bar is either, and we we kind of went back to this earlier in the podcast where. Mm-hmm. 
it like the staple of a good bar is how do they make an old fashioned or how do they make a whiskey sour? Yeah. If they don't make a whiskey sour with egg white, fucking forget it. If they don't make uh, an old fashioned with a big brick of ice, fucking forget it. Yeah. And and the thing is, like talking to you and your buddies, and they're talking about, okay, well, this is how I would make like like my version of an old fashioned. I would use this whiskey one dash of aromatic one dash of orange bitters and this is how i would make it with either simple syrup or professionally yeah. more like right. the demerara uh, or right. brown sugar just, turbinado like right, right, right. It, it changes like because it's an art form that you consume mm-hmm. not that you just look at like like a like a movie or a painting or something but you, it's something that you you fucking taste Mm-hmm. You know, and so yeah, like it's it it is an art form that the more that I hang out with you and your buddies, the more that I could appreciate. Like, yeah, it's the it's it's not just a fucking drink in a glass. No, it's 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 an art. It's a painting that is a representation of the bartender, the abilities, and the ingredients that they are provided with mm-hmm. that you can enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. On That's why your own I'm... level, it's it's art that is personal to you. That I mean, I don't know if it's the right way to say it. Like, like you could taste the bartender. That's not the right way to say it. <laughs> no, um, how it's, do I it's say? A, it? It's a painting so that you wh- can enjoy. So let me let me let, let me just tie that into a st- like what you were talking about right now. Just reminded me of this right when you said like it's a taste of the bartender. Right. Right. It's uh, it's like you're not wrong in that. Okay, especially when you ask a bartender, how would you make an old fashioned? Right. Right. So if you ask them that, okay, now they have a a bit of carte blanche to make it the way that they would do so. Because the way I would make an old fashioned is different from three or four or five different bars in. How would you make it? What's your favorite? Is that like in your I, I would imagine it has to be in your top five. Mm-hmm. It's right? definitely a much. It's, I mean, it's definitely a classic, right? And okay. So, so, how would you? What's your perfect old fashioned? So, particularly my perfect old fashioned would actually be bullet bourbon. Okay. Two ounces of bullet bourbon. Right. A dash of ango. One dash. One dash of ango. One dash of pay shots, and one dash of chocolate. No shit. Yeah. Just one dash. One of each. One of each. Okay. So normally you would get like three dashes of Ango, maybe three to four dashes of like yeah. Ango. Like I say Ango, we're talking about like Angostura bitters. This, you know, when I say Ango, that's what any bartender would say. It's like, man, I'm just Ango, right? So right. I would do one dash of Ango, one dash of pay shots, one dash of like uh, some chocolate bitters, right? Like bitter truths, like chocolate bitters, because... Uh, I get asked by the folks that I work with and just like, what do you mix your alcohol with? And I'm like, more alcohol. And they're like, and what else? Okay, I'm so like, it, ice. It's with but, bullet, right? It's yeah, with so bullet for bourbon, sure with bullet those bourbon. Those three dashes, those three how dash. much do you do uh, simple syrup or do you do you muddle so like I, a sugar cube? That one, I will muddle a sugar cube. Like a brown sugar, sugar a brown sugar cube. It's a perucha. You can find it at like any, any H-E-B. Because they're actually like, they're sizable like and i can ground those up into like a nice like fine powder so if you were to make it from scratch okay so you have your you have your mixing glass Mm -hmm. you have your sugar cube and you add one dash of each right and so before muddle it so basically i would like three dashes of each right right like sugar cube three dashes of each muddle a small splash of water okay so remember when I said like water like a uh, like a like a straw yeah. like you put in a straw put your finger over yeah and let whatever that like whatever that amount drop. just a little splash yeah and then just muddle. muddle that as much as I can add the whiskey ice stir two ounces of whiskey stir that's how I would do that's how I would do mine do you add the the gremlins cherry or personally no? no i don't not on mine for real yeah i actually with like, that one you don't yeah. with an old-fashioned exactly no i will shit. Do, i will do so with manhattan and i will do so if i use like a different kind of simple like a different simple syrup for it i might use like i might use a cherry like um 
two days ago, I used a, a type of like tea, for example, that had like cinnamon clove, like uh, nutmeg, things like that. That's what I, I spiced my simple syrup, essentially. No shit. And so that's where I like I might add a cherry, you know, but it's not it, it when it comes to adding like certain garnishes and things like that for me. Um, it's not necessarily a matter of course that I need to add a cherry to an old fashioned, but is this appropriate to my old fashioned that I'm making right now? That's what I mean. Like I read you. So like, well, for me, for example, I would say two ounces of, of a whiskey. I would say so far my preferred whiskey to make an old fashioned, Mm -hmm. make the, the, the fucking perfect one. Yeah. Uh, if you can find Oak and Eden, the, uh, oh God, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a wine cork that's in it. A Cabernet uh, cork. Sh- Cabernet cork. Dude, you- cause Cabernet corks are the only, at least so far as well, like in the whiskey, like blending category, Cabernets are the only like barrels that could stand up. Dude. And actually, at, look, I mean, I can't, it's hard for me to say like. Pinot Noirs couldn't, but like those are so delicate. Like every other wine can be extremely like delicate to not impart any meaningful flavor. Well, so I would say for my perfect old fashioned, it would be two ounces of Oak and Eden with the Cabernet uh, Oak Spiral in it. Two ounces of that. You would have uh, one shot of aromatic, one shot orange bitters, one of each. Uh, you would put at least uh, a quarter of an ounce, no more than half an ounce of simple. Yeah, no more. Like, yeah, if it's more than like that, if it's more than that, like an ounce, I'm just like, yo, that's it's, way it's too sweet. Too sweet. Too, too sweet. sweet. So remember when I was like, like telling you, I was like, when you can taste the bourbon, like right, like you can, one can taste the differences between like like a let, let's just bring it back down to basics like a whiskey old fashioned you should be able to taste the whiskey i'm sorry not uh whiskey sour okay. you should be able to taste the whiskey you should be able to taste the sugar and the lemon like and like maybe not necessarily the egg white but the egg white comes through the frothy, the, the frothiness, creaminess, the mouthfeel, the palate, how it feels in the palate. I agree. That's how it should come out. And like, and that is like what a good, not even what a good, but what a great cocktail can be like. Like when all elements work together, when like the, even if it was blended, like whiskey and tequila, you can taste elements of the whiskey and parts of the tequila right you know like that's how a cocktail should be literally like i really feel like a cocktail should be catharsis to the end of a day like where it's just like (sighs) yeah man it was a long hard day that sip was everything i needed to just exhale the stresses of the day because it's like that time in the bar yeah that time at home if one is lucky enough to have that time is to say like this is this is my time i'm going to sip this glass for as long as i want to (laughs) For as long as I can. <laughs> Until I'm ready for another one. <laughs> right. <laughs> Until I'm ready for another one. It's like, seriously, I mean, anybody, they can just have like one cocktail. I'm just like, teach me your ways. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I want, I don't want one. I want two. I want three. Maybe like two shots of Fene Branca in between and some Topo Chico. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. But, man, that, um, it's like that time just to take that back for oneself right like this is mine like it's okay to have that like one shot and one brew for yourself like this is for you you earned it one earned it because 
especially those that are like working in an office like dude if you're working with your mind all day long maybe you might want to turn it off just a little just bit just for a minute just just have that have that shot have that brew have that cocktail have two fucking cocktails okay fuck yeah fuck yeah dude it's like this is your time and your time and it will be yours for all time <laughs> for all time okay so you enjoy that happy hour <laughs> fuck yeah so dude. you enjoy that like that double johnny walker black on the rocks you enjoy those vodka sodas like point is it's like that time is yours you, and we you need earned the, it yeah it's like dude most uh, i feel like most people have earned that time than they feel like people give themselves credit for you know like um what's it called the uh i you know it's not five o'clock it fuck you up fuck off dude you finished at two you finished your work <laughs> at 2 p.m today you're done <laughs> do something with your time or you know maybe have some fun you know yeah it's like like you know if the weather's good and it's like 11 12 p.m and you're not doing anything i might as well day drink like i don't know <laughs> just feel like people uh sometimes i feel like people don't give themselves enough credit like that you know Right now, we are drinking, we are talking, anybody else can do this, you know? Uh, I don't do so, because I got certain responsibilities. Completely, re- like, reasonable, awesome, you know, nothing wrong with being responsible like that, but at the same time, I'm like, you can let go, you can have a drink or two, or, you know, little one-two combo. There you go. It's um, how do I say? Alcohol can be a a beautiful thing and a terrible thing at the same time. <laughs> like, but you know, here we I are. I agree. Hmm, what's up? I agree. Yeah, it's like it's uh, it's great and it's beautiful. If you got some poetry you like to write, there you go. There you go. But you got uh, you got an idea you need to flesh out. Here you go. Alcohol. Booze and bullshit. Great way to end it. Booze and bullshit.